Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Members, can we have your attention at the well? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to share this morning um, and asking for a moment of privilege. Maybe I should ask first. Madam Speaker, may I, may I have a moment of privilege? You may. Thank you. We wanted to do two things, but the first is very important, and that is recognize and also have a moment of silence for George Floyd. We don't have to reiterate what happened. All of us do know. And I don't think anyone in this chamber agrees what happened was right. And so we just want to take a moment of silence. And Madam Speaker, I ask for a moment of silence. A moment of silence is granted. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Representative Coleman. Assistant Minority Leader Van Winkle. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, thank you for allowing me to speak without my mask. I do have Clorox wipes, so I'll wipe the whole thing down afterwards. But uh, sincerely and first of all, thank you to my friend James, uh, Representative Coleman, for reaching out this weekend with an olive branch to many on both sides of the aisle and for working very diligently and putting many hours in uh, to bring peace to this chamber. And he did it really at a time when it was the last thing on many of our minds. Uh, members, please be seated. Um, I can't speak for anyone else, but I think some folks may be able to relate to my story, which is this all began for me personally in my heart uh, over worry over an unseen virus. Uh, we were told we had to stay home for two weeks, and then that turned into two months, and it was brought a lot of fear and uncertainty to our lives that uh, was ready to turn into anger. And that anger for me turned towards a policeman a thousand miles away uh, in a state I've never been to, a person I've never met, but I was angry because he did not value life, did not serve and protect, and did not have the eyes to see or ears to hear what was happening right before him. And I'm very angry that George Floyd and his family now have to pay the price for that. But more anger builds in me, anger not just at Minneapolis policemen, but at those who would take advantage of the situation and respond themselves by bringing more violence and more crime and more fear. I have anger for those who would use slingshots, explosives, and cars to bruise and batter our police and honorable state patrolmen, to terrorize the faithful working for Colorado like Robin and the faithful here at the front desk and our budget team working across the street as our capital filled with tear gas. I feel anger when I see our Civil War Minuteman and our Veterans Monument, things that represent the best in us, defaced or destroyed. But in the midst of the anger, in the midst of the rage, there are people like Representative Coleman who reach out. And eventually in my soul, there comes a still quiet voice, a whisper among the fire and storm that engulfs us that simply says, be still. And I remember it is well with my soul. And I remember that there is a God and I'm not him. And so peacefully I can find myself here today among 65 colleagues who are constitutionally mandated to be incredibly diverse. Representatives of every corner of every city and county in our huge and diverse state. And amidst all the chaos, we are here together together in this building, on this hollow ground, members nothing without providence. And while I cannot fully understand the path that led James, my friend, to where he is today, and he will never fully understand the path that brought me here, we can together look ahead towards a common goal and do the job that we all have to do, the job that, like this building, is bigger than any of us, a job that requires us to set aside our rage, our hurt, and our fear. And frankly, members, to set aside ourselves because the work we have to do is bigger than any of us. So let us focus on the task at hand. Let us work together where we can. Let us pass a budget and go home to our districts to work to bring peace. So I ask you all to dig down deep with me and Representative Coleman, and together we will accomplish our task and things, members, will get better. 
we will fix up our capital and our city and we will balance our budget and because we did it together, our great state will be better tomorrow than it is today. Things will get better, members. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to address and God bless each and every one of you and our staff and our state patrol and our policemen. Thank you, Repre Representative Van Winkle. Representative Coleman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's not very often when somebody comes up here and outdoes me before I even get started. <laughs> that was powerful, and I really appreciate your words and their heartfelt. And not only the words that you share, but the actions, which are more important. Um, I just wanted to talk about love. We've shared this before, and I've shared this with many of you that there are a lot of decisions here in this building that are made, or even outside of this building. And I'm not just talking about politicians, man. I'm talking about family. I know y'all got some family like me where at times I don't like them very much. I want to tell them, give them a piece of my mind. But even if I don't like them, I know that that's temporary and at that moment because I always choose to love them. And I've said this, it's a scripture, but it, I've said it before, it's we battle not against flesh and blood. We battle against things we can't see. We battle against emotion. We battle against different things. And the reason why I say that scripture in particular is because when you think of flesh and blood, you think about family. All of us are in this building to do a work together. We cannot do it without each other. Even if we don't like what another person said about us, even if we don't like a particular policy, we still have to love each other. I understand constructive criticism. Speaking to somebody in a hope that whatever they have done, whatever they've said, that their behavior will improve. But I also recognize when it's not helpful, it's hurtful. I recognize when someone is saying something to me in love because they want me to be better. This happened with Senator Bob Rankin. I've known Bob, I think, longer than most of the folks I've known personally here in this chamber. And Bob came to me after I was in office for the first two years. It was last year, my third year. It was him and Joyce. And I'd probably known them for 10 years already. And he said, you know, James, something has changed about you. It seems like you've lost your humility. When you came in, you were, you were really quiet, you were humble, but I started noticing a change in you. Now, I could have heard that and I could have got really offended. Could have said, who do you think you're talking to, Bob? But instead, I thought about why he would even take the time to tell me that. See, it's a different perspective. Someone being rude to me or someone saying, look, man, if, if I didn't care about you, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you. And honestly, it really wasn't him that told me that. It was God that told me that because he was right. That was only something that I would know. No one else, if someone else had heard that, but I had had some moments of pride in my heart. And I could have got upset because it stung, it hurt, it, it was the truth. But it actually helps me be who I am, being humble. It's the reason why I'm proud to say that all of you are my friends, all of you are my family. I don't think I've ever had a problem on social media with anybody in here or somebody in the chamber making a negative comment or coming down to the well. Now, I'm not perfect, but I recognize when someone is speaking to me in love and when someone is speaking to me to hurt me, and we know when we hurt each other, we know the difference, don't we? That doesn't make it right or wrong, that may just be your thing. But what I can tell you is I've never seen someone change their behavior by hurting them. I've only seen behavior change by loving them. And I come from a history, I come from a culture. Many of us do, but I'm more in tune. I may be more in tune with that. We're, we're taught not to say nothing. When you leave this house, know who you represent, boy. It's my grandmother. Don't be telling everybody your business. Don't be out there talking like you are right now if she's watching. She's probably upset. 
but I've recognized that if I say something just to make me feel better, it's not going to change your behavior. Members, I'm upset with law enforcement officers who abuse their privileges. But I also recognize that there are people who wake up every day. Many of us in this chamber, we're not law enforcement, but we don't know, given what's going on outside, if we're going to make it home. And before COVID-19, before all this going on outside, some of us had felt like our lives were in danger. They feel that way as well when they walk out. And it is their job to do their job the right way. And we're asking those folks who do their job the right way, which I would venture to say it's a lot, it's a majority, to hold those folks accountable who have abused their privileges, just as we do here, as we're holding each other accountable right now in this moment. The reason why things aren't fixed is because people don't know how to communicate with each other. And that's all we're doing. We're having a conversation about how we treat each other better. And we also know the difference between protesters and rioters. And as it was said, we work in this building. We hate to pull up and see it damaged this way. Who wants to support folks who are coming to damage what is ours? This is our city. This is our state. And there may be folks who are from here or not from here, and they do not belong here if they intend to harm us. But we all have protests on these West Steps, no matter what the cause is. And that's fine, in peace, but we, none of us, condone that. The last thing I want to say and why I felt passionate and why I wanted to reach out, and I was so grateful that I had a chance to speak with Kevin, speak with Dave, speak with Pat, and that they were willing to have this conversation and we can talk like this. What you do outside of this building, that's up to you, man. I hope that you model the same behaviors outside of the building that you do in the building, yeah? Of course. But what you do outside of this building, I'm not as worried about. Before Marilyn Eddins retired, she said to me in tears, that the reason why I'm retiring are many. The reasons why I'm retiring are many, but one of the reasons that I can't be here anymore is because of the way you all treat each other. And we have these conversations like this, and we love each other, and then we go back and we do the same stuff again. We only got two weeks. I'm hoping for the next couple of weeks, or however long we're gonna be here, because we keep delaying that in that short amount of time, out of 52 weeks in a year, if you want to disagree with the bill, if you feel like you have to come down, filibuster, I don't, that's, do that. But don't do it in the name of another individual. Don't do it in the name of George Floyd. Don't do it to hurt one of your colleagues. Do it because you disagree with the bill. That's fine. But let's treat each other right. Let's honor Marilyn in that. And one last thing I'll say, one of my colleagues said something that was true. He said, you know, every time someone says something about me in a negative way, or I feel like they say something about one of my colleagues, I feel like I got to say something. And I absolutely agree. I should have said something on behalf of Marilyn by now. But I didn't. I just sat there in the back, stayed quiet, and watched it happen. So I'm just as at fault as anybody in here. I love y'all, man. One of these days, we might be memorializing each other in here. And all that we were upset about, all we were frustrated about, nobody's going to care about none of that. Nobody's going to even know who we are on these walls over here, what bills we pass. We'll know, because we serve together. We're a family. So I just want to say thank you so much for loving me. I was going to call out all of y'all names and tell you I love you, but I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> because they know. Sometimes y'all may not know that. They know. I send a text to them every day, and they're probably tired of it. But if you didn't know, I love you. Thank y'all. Appreciate it.